The New Orleans Saints looking to make some veteran additions to the roster after the first week of training camp. And what happens if Taysom Hill doesn't win the quarterback competition? All of that on today's episode of Locked On Saints. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Saints, your daily New Orleans Saints podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is good, Houdet Nation and Houdet family? Welcome into another episode of Locked On Saints, the daily podcast covering your New Orleans Saints, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. On today's episode, free agent additions, one of which already official for the New Orleans Saints, former Atlanta Falcons running back Devontae Freeman getting his opportunity in the Big Easy. What does it mean for the running backs behind Alvin Kamara? Then we'll take a look over at the cornerback spot to pending free agent additions, depending on physicals and medical checks, Prince Amukamara, as well as Kavari Russell, what that means for the Saints in the secondary. And then we'll wrap up with a look at Taysom Hill and what possibly happens with him if he doesn't win the quarterback competition against Jameis Winston. We've got all that for you on today's episode. And as always, I'm your host, Ross Jackson, at Ross Jackson Nola on Twitter, co-managing editor over at CanalStreetChronicles.com and your Tuesday co-host over at the National Locked On NFL podcast. We got all that and a little bit of land yet for you on today's episode of Locked On Saints, your team every day. All right, family, let's kick off today's episode. An exhilarating day three of practice on Saturday, on Sunday. The Saints taking the day off and then back at it on Monday. I'm recording this Sunday afternoon to get this to you a little bit early for the Monday episode. Day three notes, the big things that you need to know from there uh, were pretty simple. Um, Jameis Winston was the starter over at the quarterback spot. You saw some nice grabs from guys like Deontay Harris, who continues to stand out. Chris Hogan may have already started to flatten out a little bit. And then, of course, they ended up moving. Uh, instead of going into pads on Monday, they're going to pads on Tuesday uh, there, Thursday and Friday, pending whether still open to fans. But one of the big stories that came out of the day three of practice were all of the tryouts. The Saints visiting with tons of players, J.R. Sweezy. They also visited uh, with Brent Kivale, who ends up coming in as an offensive lineman or tried out as an offensive lineman, a pair of O-line that they saw there. But the big name that was attached uh, to this tryout list or this workout list was running back Devontae Freeman, of course, a former uh, pro bowler with the Atlanta Falcons, now a New Orleans Saint. He signed a one-year deal with the Saints, very likely vet minimum, so he probably will not count against the salary cap at all uh, for the New Orleans Saints as the sort of bottom tier of their top 51 is already at $850,000. So if he gets the $137.5 million signing bonus that you, or excuse me, $175,000 uh, signing bonus that you usually see when it comes to uh, veteran minimum contracts, then in that case, you'll see that chunk of change maybe count against the Saints, but that's a, you know less than $200,000. Not a big deal in the general term of the salary cap. So very likely he'll be on that one-year vet minimum deal, not counting against the salary caps. But what is he going to be for the New Orleans Saints, right? Like, is he just a camp body or is he somebody that has a legitimate potential and chance here to end up sticking with the New Orleans Saints? Now, I like to remind everybody that the Saints do this often. They bring in these uh, veteran running backs to get a look at them every year that they can. Honestly, we've seen it over and over again. You can think back to 2017 and on to 2020, actually, and you see it. You know, Adrian Peterson, who signed in April of 2017. You've seen Mike Gillisley. You've seen uh, uh, Terrence uh, Terrence West. You saw Shane Vereen, Matt Days, Rob Kelly. Ty Montgomery was one of those guys last year. So now you add Devontae Freeman to the list. And if he stands out the way that Ty Montgomery did, then you can expect him to potentially make the roster because he'll bring in some RB3 competition for a guy like Dwayne Washington. Now, it's not unusual to see this in New Orleans, and it's not unusual to see them try to have this type of competition at the, I'll call it the bottom of a depth chart. Obviously, with the running back, the Saints usually keep three, but last year they kept four in terms of holding on to Ty Montgomery. I do expect Ty Montgomery to make the roster again this year, especially because of the help that they need at the wide receiver position in particular, which is where he's been focused almost solely. So that is really what makes this competition 
intriguing, right? Because Ty Montgomery is probably going to be in your wide receiver room, essentially, right? He's going to be utilized as a wide receiver. Meanwhile, a guy like Devontae Freeman, and then you've got Dwayne Washington, you've got Stevie Scott, and of course, you've got Tony Jones Jr., who all could potentially end up as the third running back on the roster, separate from the fullback position, of course, which seems to be Alex Arma. And so I look at Devontae Freeman as somebody that actually has a legitimate shot to make the roster without saying too much. I, I do think, though, that Dwayne Washington is still the favorite here because of the fact that he's a special teams ace for you. And Devontae Freeman and his health and his health questions that have come over time, I don't know that you really look at him as somebody you want to deploy on special teams, but he could be an interesting piece for you to use as a third running back in your rotation, especially considering you have a 17th game this year and you want to try to keep the wear and tear off of Alvin Kamara. Devontae Freeman can catch passes out the backfield and he can run in between the tackles for you and he can get around the corner when he's healthy as well. So I still think, you know, it's a little early, of course. He just signed his contract to say that he's going to be on the roster in 2021, but I'm not going to doubt him that opportunity. But at the moment, I still imagine that Dwayne Washington will hold him off for that third running back position because of his ability on special teams. But an interesting and very low risk signing for the New Orleans Saints to add in Devontae Freeman, who again will count very minimally, if at all, against the salary cap here during camp and effectively cost the Saints nothing bring him in, get a look at him and see if he could potentially contribute to you in 2021. They didn't stop there, though. They also looked over at the cornerback position, but did they do enough that they can stop looking at it for the rest of the offseason? That's what we'll talk about next with the signings of, or the expected signings, excuse me, of Prince Amukamara, as well as Kavari Russell. So we'll get to them here in just a moment on today's episode of Locked on Saints, your team every day. And today's episode of Locked on Saints is brought to you by our good friends over at Built.com. And of course, I want to tell you about the best tasting protein bars in the world. Built Bar, the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar and the official protein bar of U.S. track and field over at the Olympics. So you know these guys are legit and these are legit, honestly. I mean, you've got nine incredible flavors that are all covered in 100% chocolate and give you a little something for everyone, depending upon what it is that you love. Mint brownie, uh, you've got peanut butter brownie if you're a peanut butter and chocolate person. If you like chocolate and fruit, you've got strawberry, raspberry, orange. Uh, if you like something super sweet sounding, you could check out salted caramel as well as cookies and cream. And you don't have any guilt, even though it's covered in 100% chocolate and it sounds super sweet. You're talking four or five grams of sugar along with those 17 or 18 grams of protein. So go and check them out over at built.com. And don't forget to use the promo code LOCKED15, L O C K E D 1 5, so you can get 15% off of your next order of the best tasty protein bars on the market. Built Bar at built.com. All right, Huda Nation, continuing on with today's episode of Locked on Saints. Prince Amukamara, a veteran uh, cornerback here in the NFL, has spent nine years in the NFL thus far, uh, expected to sign with the New Orleans Saints, according to Dan Graziano over with ESPN. They also mentioned uh, a cornerback hasn't been in the league for very long, came in in 2016, Kevari Russell, uh, who, look, his, you know, he was drafted in the third round by the Kansas City Chiefs, spent some time with the Cincinnati Bengals, most recently with the Green Bay Packers, has spent more time on special teams than he has on defense. So maybe that's where the Saints are looking for him. Because remember, there's still that open spot, that gunner spot across from JT Gray with the uh, departure of Justin Hardy this off season. So let's talk a little bit about both of these guys. The thing to remember is that at the time that I'm recording this, at least maybe by the time that you're watching it, they're signed. But the expectation is for them to sign pending physicals. They have to pass their physicals and medical checks, and then they would end up being there. If the New Orleans Saints sign both of these players, uh, Devontae Freeman was the 90th player on the roster, so they will have to move on from two players at that point. You have a, a guy like Dylan Sainer, who hasn't been available very much to start camp early at this point. They could potentially move on from him. And then there's also some names that you just really haven't heard so far over the course of training camp that maybe the Saints have seen enough of for this time and want to get a look at some other folks. You always see them kind of shuffle around a bit and try to get a look at as many players as they can throughout this time. Let's talk a little bit about uh, Kavari Russell, just because there's fewer notes on him than what I have on Prince of Mukamara, of course. Uh, so basically, like I mentioned, third round pick back in 2016, didn't actually land with the team that drafted him, ended up being elsewhere. But not a lot of NFL starting experience. He's got 22 total tackles over the course of his career, no interceptions, one touchdown allowed back in 2018. As we mentioned, he played more special team snaps than he has played defensive snaps. However, 
only about a handful, maybe if you're lucky, two handfuls a year at the gunner position at certain points throughout his career. Not consistently a gunner for this team, but has played a bit in the field goal block unit, a bit in the punt coverage unit, as well as the punt return unit. Five foot 11, 196 pounds out of Notre Dame, part of the Fighting Irish over there. And so he fits the size and he also comes in with 449 or 445. Sorry, I can't remember which one it was, uh, but 44 high 44 speed, let's say it that way. And with that, does it give you a ton of speed over on the outside, uh, but does give you some, right? I mean, we talk about blazing speed like the Eric Stokes of the world who ended up being drafted by the Green Bay Packers who come in and blaze those four twos, four threes. But still, we have to remember that four four and sub four five are still pretty, pretty fast as well. So we'll keep an eye out on uh, Kavari Russell, particularly in special teams drills to see if he's able to end up making a bit of a name for himself. Uh, and creating an opportunity for himself. Meanwhile, Prince of Mukamara, you know a little bit more of 10 interceptions over the course of his career, doesn't have the big numbers when it comes to takeaways, but has the solid and uh, replicable numbers that you've seen with him in coverage. Over the last three years, 2017, 60.8% completion percentage allowed. 2018, that was 639 in 2019, it was 62.1, according to Pro Football Focus. You saw him have a passer rating of 102.3 given up last year, which was up from 82.9 and 89.1 to two years before that. He's given up multiple touchdowns in each of the last two seasons, but all, but not much. Two touchdowns in 2019, three touchdowns in 2018, and you have seen him with uh, 16 pass breakups. Is that right? 15 pass breakups, excuse me, over the course of the last three seasons as well, even with only three interceptions. But three of those, all three of those interceptions came in 2018. So you've seen him be very effective over the course of the last few seasons in terms of passes defensed. If you look at anybody that has played in the NFL since 2011, he's 21st at the cornerback spot for most passes defended uh, during that time. If you look at players that played in 115 or fewer games during that period, much like Prince Mukamara, who's only played in 100. And 13, he would then be 11th since 2011. So pretty good stuff there in terms of him getting, uh, you know, being there and able to make uh, a play on the ball. Uh, very much a man coverage corner played in man uh, 31% of the time in 2019, 27% in 2018. That doesn't have as much to do with him as it does with the scheme that he plays in. But if you look at who you're trying to replace from last year, the Saints in 2020, uh, Janora Shake is playing 41.2% of the time in man coverage, 369 when it came to Marshall and Lattimore. Interestingly enough, Prince of Mugamara, a little bit more of a defensive right side cornerback, offensive left, which is exactly where Marshall and Lattimore plays as well, but has experience on both sides of the field playing in coverage. So good news for the New Orleans Saints there. In man coverage, when he played in 2019, remember he didn't play in 2020 at all. He was on the uh, training camp, or excuse me, the practice squad roster for the Arizona Cardinals, but allowed a 65 completion percentage, 50, 65% completion percentage in man coverage in 2019, according to uh, Pro Football Focus, only 80 yards after catch allowed as well. So even if he does give up some catches, he immediately gets that uh, receiver to the ground. So, uh, I mean, look, adding veteran experience to this defense, not a bad choice at all. And you knew they were going to go with veteran experience. Does this wrap everything up in the Cornerback position for the New Orleans Saints, I highly doubt it. I still think if they are have a chance at landing somebody via a trade, they would definitely go that way. If they have a chance of landing another player that could be a very clear starter at the second cornerback spot, they would absolutely go that way. It doesn't surprise me to see them bring in two cornerbacks either, especially considering that PJ, excuse me, Patrick Robinson just had a death in the family. Uh, and Grant Hadley has missed a few practices with a death in the family too. Those are obviously situations you want to be very sensitive of. And you want to make sure that they have the time that they need. So also seeing two corners being added doesn't really surprise me at all if they want to make sure that those guys need the time that they need. This is the type of organization that would care that much about their players to make sure that they do that. So that could also be another factor in all of this. But I do think Prince Mukamara, just like Devontae Freeman, has a chance to make the 53-man roster, but you're not ready to sign it, uh, you know, sign, seal, deliver it over to him just yet. You want to see how all of this plays out over the course of camp. But if nothing else, the veteran presence is going to be a very much welcome one in that secondary. Coming up next, though, we want to jump to the quarterback position. Talk a little bit about Taysom Hill. What happens if Taysom doesn't win the starting quarterback position? What does he do for the New Orleans Saints in 2021? We have that coming up for you as we wrap up today's episode 
of Locked On Saints. You definitely want to see the New Orleans Saints settle that cornerback two position as well as some of those other holes on the defensive side. Then you might feel a little bit more comfortable taking the over at nine and a half wins for the New Orleans Saints, which is what everything is set at over at BetOnline. Dot ag. You can see that for the New Orleans Saints, as well as several other props, odds, and bets that you can get in on across the world of sports over at their website, betonline.ag. And when you get there and you go ahead and sign up for your free account and put in your first deposit so you can start betting, don't forget to use the promo code Locked On L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, so you can get a 50% welcome bonus on top of it. You want to bet on the NFL, you want to bet on the NBA, MLB as it, roll, as it continues to roll along toward the uh, toward the playoffs in the postseason, which is one of the most exciting postseasons in sports, the NHL on its way back, the Seattle Kraken uh, getting started. There's so much to pay attention to all across the world of sports. You want to get in on any of that, as well as some of the other bonus stuff that they have, like esports, as well as reality TV show and game shows. You could check them out, betonline.ag. Don't forget that promo code, though, locked on, L O C K E D O N, for that 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit of Bet Online, your online sportsbook experts. Let's get it. Houdat Nation wrapping up today's episode of Locked On Saints. If Taysom Hill does not win the starting quarterback position for the New Orleans Saints, some questions are arising around how he'll be utilized for the team. Will he just become the backup quarterback to Jameis Winston, or will you be able to see him on the field in the same role, in the same capacity that you've seen in years past? Kat Terrell of The Athletic doing a phenomenal job sort of illustrating all of this and, and laying it all out. Basically, the question mark becomes, did Taysom Hill slim down too much to be able to do all of his usual roles, what we've seen him in sort of the Swiss Army knife role, if he doesn't win the starting quarterback position? Now, can he bulk back up? Sure. But would he just be used in a different way? I think there's merit to that. Maybe you don't see him on special teams as much, which we've continued to see over the past couple of seasons. And instead, you just see him maybe utilize as a, uh, you know, a pass catcher out the backfield, potentially even a runner out of the backfield, which you would see him running the ball out of the backfield, whether he wins the quarterback position anyway, or if he wins the quarterback position anyway, doesn't seem logical to take that away from him. But maybe he's not able to serve the blocking tight end role any longer to help you seal off some of the uh, better edge rushers around the NFL. Maybe you're not able to really target him over the middle of the field and put him in contested catch situations, but instead he becomes a little bit more of a weapon to you in the intermediate or deeper parts of the field. I think it's really interesting because a lot of the conversation seems to center around what he can't do. I would actually be more interested to see what new he could do with his new focus and what he has done. Now, he spoke very specifically and, and, and very uh, knowledgeably about muscle groups that he was working backside shoulder as opposed to front side shoulder and, and getting everything together so that he has the muscle groups prepared and he could you know, avoid soreness and all these other things when it comes to play in the quarterback spot. But does any of that take away from his ability to be able to serve other roles? I certainly think that the special teams role would be one of those spots. But I think because of the fact that you're still going to see him take hits, you're still going to see him run the ball if he's the quarterback, that that portion of his game doesn't necessarily go away. But maybe some of the bigger man things that you've asked him to do in the past as a contested catch guy over the middle of the field. And then of course, uh, as a blocker, maybe you see those things tend to go or, or, or begin to go away. And then of course, you don't put him in any return situations or anything like that as well. And it does give him the opportunity then to be sort of quarterback three in that situation where he doesn't become the in-game substitute, but could become the long-term substitute, just like what we saw with Drew Brees last year. Then you're leaning on the development of a guy like Ian Book, who's coming in as a rookie out of Notre Dame, the winningest quarterback in Notre Dame history, which is great. And we've seen some flashes from him in camp, does a little bit of, does some of what Taysom Hill can do in terms of his escapability, his mobility, all of that. But I think you want him to be a pocket passer first with escapability. Whereas if you you know just look at what you saw in college and what we saw at the Senior Bowl when we were out there watching him, it was still a little bit more escape first, extend plays before they needed to be extended type of uh, an attitude. So I think those are all things that you're going to see them work to adjust to prepare Ian Book for a quarterback two situation in case Jameis Winston wins that starting quarterback role. And then maybe you see Taysom Hill deployed into potentially some more exciting ways or just potentially fewer ways so that they could also protect him to utilize their quarterback down the road should they need to in case things go sideways with Jameis Winston or heaven forbid there's any type of injury that needs to be taken care of. But honestly, for Taysom Hill, none of that is the concern. He wants to be the starting quarterback for the New Orleans Saints, and that's where his focus is at this time, telling everyone he hasn't really talked about what happens if he doesn't win 
the quarterback position, which I think is very wise on his part as he continues to work hard to take that position. Now, we'll certainly see, I believe, one more day of Jameis Winston with the first team on Monday before pads go on on Tuesday. Then perhaps we see the next round of rotations and Taysom Hill back with the first team at that point. We'll certainly learn a lot once the pads go on. It'll be a ton of fun to watch and keep up with here on Locked On Saints. So I appreciate y'all as always for being here. Be back with you for another episode tomorrow. Background's going to change up before that Tuesday episode drops because I'm traveling again, but all worth it to be able to hopefully, weather permitting, make it out to camp this week. So a ton that we're going to be able to talk about and a ton we're going to be able to share here on the show. So let's get grinding, everybody. I appreciate y'all very much for being here. As always, you can find me on Twitter at Ross Jackson, N-O-L-A. Hit me up. Let me know how the family's doing. Let me know how you're living. Let me know how you're mom and them. And trust you, that nation, I'll holla at you.